Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel, Our Blessed and Beautiful Life. My name is Tina. Most of you guys know me. For those of you that are new that don't know me, it's nice to meet you and I'm glad you're here. Um, tonight I'm just popping on to do just a quick check in with you guys and say hey. Um, I'm sorry for my, uh, I feel like I have sleepy voice going on. That's what I call it. I just woke up from a nap, like a two hour nap. <laughs> I'm like, what in the world is going on? I don't know about you guys. Are you guys nappers? Um, I, I've never been a napper because when I take a nap ever in my life, I wake up and I'm just like a crab apple. I'm completely cranky and my family's like, please don't take a nap anymore. So I don't take naps, but I don't know what it is. Like the last couple of months, um, I will get these moments where I'm just like completely lethargic. Like my body's just telling me, mm -mm, you're done. You need to lay down. Um, and I don't, I don't get a lot of downtime really, um, with my real estate business and the property and then homeschooling Parker and everything. I'm usually like, go, go, go all the time. Um, my day in the life video, that's pretty much, um, how things go. It's just, I, I don't really sit down, but today, um, I showed houses earlier today and it was such a gloomy day. I mean, super gloomy and drizzly outside. Um, and I'm like, you know, I'm going to make a cup of coffee and I'm going to sit on the couch and I'm going to watch some of my favorite YouTubers that I follow. I'm just going to chill out. I'm just going to be lazy and I'm going to scroll for a little while. So I laid down on the couch and I just, my eyes, I couldn't even keep them open. I'm like, seriously? So I'm like, okay, I, I'm going to take a nap. So I turned my phone off and I actually took a nap. I, I meant to only take like a little cat nap. Um, and I guess I slept for like two and a half hours. I don't know. I woke up and it was dark outside. <laughs> so, um, and usually if I do try to nap, I can't nap anyway, because it's like, what is it? Everybody knows when mom lays down to take a nap, the UPS guy comes to the door, the dogs start barking. Everybody calls me as soon as I lay down to take a nap. My husband, this literally happened tonight. I'm not making this up. Do you know what woke me up from my nap tonight? Joe and I have been talking about putting a cat door in the garage wall. So it's the laundry room wall that leads into the garage, right? So that we can put the litter boxes in the garage because we have two cats. We have Jake and we have Leo and two litter boxes. We clean them every day. So it's not a matter of the smell. It's really a matter of litter being all over the floor. Like I'm constantly having to sweep and having the litter boxes in the laundry room is just annoying. Okay. So we've been talking about putting a cat door in there. So I'm laying on the couch dreaming in my nap and I wake up to just this, it's shaking the whole house. And I'm like, I, it startled me and I sit up and I'm like, what in the heck is that? And I go in the laundry room and Joe has drywall all over the floor and he's sawing the hole in the wall. And I'm like, you knew I was, you know, I was taking a nap, right? You, you saw me like I was taking a nap. And he was like, oh, babe, I'm sorry, I forgot. So anyway, that's the story though. I, I don't take a nap because one, I get crabby when I wake up from a nap. It doesn't matter how short or long it is. And two, I'm never able to take a nap. I'm just woken up a million times. But I actually did get a good two, two and a half hours today before Joe started opening up the wall. So um, I feel pretty good right now. I'm a little hyper and um, rejuvenized and I'm drinking a yummy cup of coffee while I'm sitting here chatting with you guys. So it is, it is fine all as well. I wanted to give you guys an update and I'm giggling cause I'm looking at the time and it's like uh, three minutes. So I've been talking for four minutes and I haven't got to my point yet. So um, those of you guys out there that keep nagging me because I talk too much, <laughs> Like, oh, you guys have no idea the comments that I get. It cracks me up. It's like, dang, girl, you talk too much. Get to the point. You know, it's like, um, you don't have to stick around. So bye-bye. No worries. Um, that's totally fine. It doesn't hurt my feelings at all. This is who I am and I'm not going to change. So plenty of YouTubers out there. Anyway, um, I wanted to talk to you guys today about a quick update on our adoption of Jackson. Most of you know that we've been in the process of trying to adopt a little boy. His name is Jackson and he is nine years old. He actually just had his birthday in March. So um, he's in the foster care system and we've been trying to adopt him for quite a while. Um, our first inquiry on Jackson was back in October of 2018. That's how long it's been. It took the caseworkers a year 
to respond to our submission of our home study. So it was like a whole year went by before we even got a response as to yay or nay, you guys might be a good match for him, you might not. Um, you guys know since then we've had a visit where we flew to his state and spent the weekend with him. Um, but there has been some struggles as far as the uh, specifics, paperwork, um, approvals, you know, it's an interstate transfer. So there's, there's been a little bit of drama there that's been causing delays and it's been quite frustrating. Um, so I am, I'm really excited to say that um, Jackson's placement in our home has been approved. Is, oh my gosh, it's been approved. So before this coronavirus thing happened and they shut the world down, right? Um, probably sometime, what was that? Like mid-March, something like that. Um, we were supposed to have a spring break visit with Jackson and his caseworkers required this visit before they will allow him to be placed with us. A frustrating because we just want him now but at the same time I understand that because we only had one weekend visit with Jackson in his home state and that was all supervised it was no really intimate setting where we could really get to know him really see him interact and so I totally get that and I'm totally for this in-home visit and I was stoked to find out that they were gonna actually let him come and be with us for spring break for the whole week um, his caseworker was going to drive halfway and we were going to drive halfway and meet and pick up Jackson and bring him home. And then she was going on her vacation. And because of when she got back from her vacation to come get Jackson, um, it was actually going to allow us to keep Jackson for like, I think it was like 13 days. So we were so excited. Parker was beyond excited to have his brother um, because he's already, you know, of course already calling Jackson his brother, but have somebody to play with every day for like almost two weeks. Well, then the virus happened and it was like 10 days before we were supposed to go and get Jackson. Joe already took leave and time off so we could drive up there. And um, I'm, I was getting kind of nervous and I'm like, you know, I haven't heard anything. So I don't know if this whole thing is going to affect us being able to see Jackson. Um, this is like right when they had started closing all the schools down in the different states, but they hadn't done the actual shutdowns of like the hair salons and the, the, the restaurants and things like that. So we didn't know what was going to happen, where it, where it was going at that point. Um, so I'm like, well, maybe no news is good news. Maybe not hearings. But then I'm like, no, with the history that I've had with working with these people, um, no news is bad news. <laughs> Cause I have to like stay on them and ask some questions and to get responses and to like really feel like the ball is rolling. So I emailed her and I just asked her, I said, Hey, um, since all the schools were shut down already in our state and in Jackson state, the kids aren't in school. Is there any reason why we couldn't meet you earlier um, than April 1st to get Jackson for our spring break visit? And um, that's when she responded basically said, there's not going to be any visit until further notice. Um, all visitation has been stopped, like this whole email. And I understand it. Um, the only thing that really upset me was, were you going to tell us? Um, when were you going to tell us? Like, it was almost a seven-hour drive that we were going to drive to meet them. And Joe took time off work. I mean, we were like literally a week out from going to get him. And I hadn't heard nothing. I hadn't heard all this is going on around us, but I hadn't gotten any kind of email saying, hey, um, unfortunately, due to the current events, we're going to have to postpone our visit. Like, there was just nothing. Um, so it's like, were we going to be like five hours in on our drive to get them and you were going to like email me or call me and say, hey, the visit's off? That's what frustrated me. Um, and, I, and I expressed that to her um, as nicely as I possibly could. You know, our family time, our family schedule, my husband's job, those things matter too. So as much as we're trying to be considerate of your time, um, we just ask that you do the same for us. Like let's, let's be considerate of each other and we need to communicate, communicate, communicate people. Oh, I cannot. You guys is like one of my biggest pet peeves, like communication or lack of communication, lack of follow through. Um, so anyway, that visit got postponed, well canceled really until further notice. Um, so that was really disappointing. And I just kind of shut down after that. I was like, you know what? And I prayed and I was like, God, if this is meant to be, you will let it be. So 
I'm going to try to just relax. And it was like out of nowhere, just a couple days ago, I got an email and they said that, you know, both states, um, because it's an interstate transfer, both states have to do these approvals and they have to approve the, the placement. Well, it's been approved. Everything has been approved. And um, so that's really exciting. And we have a Zoom conference call with J uh, Jackson's um, adoption worker to work on some of the paperwork for his subsidy that we'll get every month. Um, uh, it's not much. It's like, it, I think it's really only, I, he I heard it was only like a couple hundred bucks a month that that um, the state will give us because of um, some of the disabilities and things that he has. So um, we're supposed to do that paperwork on Monday over a Zoom call. And then Monday evening, we have a Zoom call with Jackson. We've done one other video call with him the other day and Parker just loved that. So they have a Lego date for Monday. They're, they're gonna play Legos together. Um, and it's the best we can do. It's the next best thing to a visit, you know, with this virus going on. So I don't know what that looks like. I, I don't think any of us really know what this looks like with this whole virus and the shutdowns. And it's not like we're just having to worry about our state and our requirements. We're having to worry about the state that Jackson's in too. So it's just kind of keeping an eye on all, on all that stuff. Um, but I do have to say, um, isn't it funny? Cause we always hear people say, Oh, everything happens for a reason. Everything happens for a reason. God has a plan. God has a plan. It's in God's timing. It's not in ours, but you guys, that's so true. I mean, sometimes we just have to step back and go, okay, Lord, I don't understand any of it. <laughs> I don't understand why you're doing this or why you're not letting this happen. But we have to just step back and trust in him and believe in him because he's not up there going, oh, wow, that really threw me for a loop. I didn't know that was going to happen. No, he's seen all this before it even happened. If Jackson's destined to be our son, God knows that. And I, I had talked to you guys in my last adoption update video, um, some of the issues with like the finances because we were going to have to, or we chose, and please go back and watch that video. Just, I, I won't re-explain it all just because, um, <laughs> my viewers that hate my chattiness are really going to hate that. But, um, basically we were going to opt to pay out of pocket for all of, um, Jackson's in-home, um, uh, check-in visits. You know, there's a six month temporary placement before the adoption is finalized. And because of issues with the adoption agency that we chose being a private agency and not through social services, the state Jackson's coming from said they won't pay for that. Um, every month they have, someone has to come in that certified and check on us and see how the placement is going, interview Jackson, interview us. And so that wasn't going to be cheap. It was like, um, I think it was like $500 a month for six months, uh, to have that done. So that was a, a big chunk of money in addition to what we've already spent on this process, getting our home study, um, flying up to see him, like all this stuff. So Joe and I were like, we'll make it happen. I'll go sell a couple houses. Like, I don't care what it takes. We'll make it happen because I know if it's meant to be, God will make a way. But that was a stressor for us, like having to pay that every month um, for six months or even longer, because what if they deem, hey, Jackson's having some trouble adjusting. We don't know if he's ready for, for finalization yet. Like we need to monitor this for another three months. Like however long that would have lasted, we would have been paying out of pocket for those visits to happen. So that was a little scary for us. Um, the other thing that was scary for me was the school situation for Jackson. So he has been in a, um, it's my understanding that he's been in kind of like a private school environment for quite a while. Um, but then we were talking to him like a month and a half ago and they have moved him from that environment and enrolled him in a public school. So he's already had that move from whatever school he was used to into a public school. Now, if the April 1st visit would have happened the way we had planned before the virus happened, um, they were going to place him with us after that, shortly after that, as soon as the placement was approved. So basically right now, um, because it just got approved a couple days ago. So what are we like the third week of April? So there's like a month to a month and a half left of the school year. Now I cannot homeschool Jackson until the adoption's finalized. So when we get Jackson, I either have to enroll him in a, 
um, pr public school or I have to enroll him in an accredited private school. So obviously I am going to choose to enroll him in an, a, a um, private Christian school, which there's a really good one that is like, it just so happens to be like five minutes from our house. So it's perfect. Um, but the concern was if we got him before this school year ended, I called and talked to the different private schools and the one that I'm talking about that I really want to enroll him in, and they will not do just like a temporary enrollment like that. They won't do like just a one-month enrollment. Um, so I would have been forced to enroll Jackson in the public school, the public elementary school that we have here. My Well, I, have, I would say my problem with that, but I have many problems with that. Obviously, I homeschool Parker. Um, and I have major convictions and opinions about the public school system, especially with society and the things that are going on in our culture today. I will not, 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 not allow the public school system to raise my children. No way. Um, so, <laughs> and then to make things worse, the elementary school, the public elementary school that our house is zoned for just happens to be the worst ranked public school for elementary in our area. Um, fights, academics, just not good at all. I mean, it's like, it's really bad. We even drove over to the area to look at the school. And I mean, it's like, it's like across the tracks, you know what I'm saying? And it's like over there. So it's like, it's not good. And I'm like, okay, yeah. So they just moved Jackson into a public school in his state. So he's had that adjustment already, making new friends, leaving the people he knew. Then you're gonna place him with us. I'm gonna have to throw him in some really crappy public school for a month to a month and a half, just for him to you know, have summer break. And at which time I would then enroll him in the private school, the Christian school, because our adoption wouldn't be finalized by then. So um, I'm surely not going to re-enroll him in the public school, knowing that it's one of the worst schools in our area. Um, so it's just a lot of, it would have been a lot of moving around for him. Um, and then you throw on the, 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 the fact that being placed with us in a new home, a new family, new surroundings, new routine, there would have been, there's enough adjustment as it is for this little boy. Um, I'm, I was trying to minimize the stress for the educational part of it. Um, and there was no way to do that. I wouldn't have had any choice if he was already placed here right now. He would have had to go into the public school because the private school won't allow a um, short-term enrollment. And I can't homeschool him until the adoption is finalized. So I told Joe the other day, I got that email that his placement has been approved and it's like, it's bittersweet. It's like, here he is. You want him? You want him? Yes, you do. Well, you can't have him right now. That's what it feels like. I'm like, holy crap. It's been like almost two years and the adoption is, or the placement has been approved and we can't have him because of this virus. And once the, the shutdowns have been lifted to the point where his state will allow the visit to happen, we can have the visit as long as the visit goes well, which I'm hoping they're still gonna allow us to have him for like a week or so, then they will place him with us. So now, um, that's probably not gonna happen before school gets out. I can't imagine, you know, the, the time that it takes to actually logistically for him to get here. I'm kind of keeping my fingers crossed that that doesn't happen until school gets out. So now that we've had this whole delay with the virus and not getting to visit him when we thought we would, maybe the time frame for everything will work out and we'll get him like right when school gets out. So we would have him for the summer, which is amazing. The kids can be together. We have summer, no school, no interruptions. And then when the school year starts, I can just enroll him right into the private school, the Christian school that I wanna put him in. So I'm praying to God that that's the way that it works out. And maybe that's one of the reasons why he allowed the delays to happen and also financially um, I my real estate business um, has been most successful with strictly referrals um, I have you know we're a military family this is a very big military area that we live in multiple branches um, people selling or people leaving people coming in so people need to sell people need to buy and um, I've just had a lot of referrals from friends and coworkers and things like that <clears throat> that are military as well. So this summer has picked up like super duper fast. Like 
um, I've gotten a lot of clients, listings, and buyers all of a sudden, and I'm so happy and grateful for that. There's nothing better than a referral. You know what I mean? Like, there's nothing better than one of your previous clients saying, yo, you need to use Tina because she's awesome. Like, we loved her. And I've just gotten so many great compliments about communication, obviously. I like to treat people the way that I want to be treated, right? So you best believe I communicate. Um, and I follow through, and that's huge for me, you know, just kind of detail oriented and being on top of it. You know, that's what they're hiring me for. Um, moving is a stressful thing. And I try to like, um, eliminate some of that stress for them if I can. So I am so humbly grateful, uh, for all these clients that I've gotten all of a sudden, because you guys now when Jackson gets placed with us paying for those monthly visits, um, it's not going to hurt us. Like it's the money's already set aside for it, like for the whole six months. So I'm like, thank you, God, like praise the Lord. Right? Like that's amazing. So, um, God does have a plan. I'm a, I'm a little impatient. So I have to pray about that sometimes, you know, Lord, give me patience, <laughs> help me to trust you because I know you got this. So, um, anyways, I'm excited. You guys, I'm so excited. I'm nervous. I think we're all nervous. You know, Parker, of course, is just beside himself with excitement. He doesn't, he's just like, I have a brother. I'm having someone to play dinosaurs with, you know, it's so super cute. Um, but yeah, so I'll keep you guys posted on that. So as soon as this visit happens, um, it's my understanding that they're going to place him here as long as the visit goes well. So now our, our only thing we're waiting for is the shutdowns, um, from the virus to kind of be lifted up so that we can logistically plan it to make it happen. So that's really exciting, but that's my update you guys. So if you could, um, continue to just keep us in your thoughts and your prayers, um, you know, Jackson, he's been in the system for a long time. It, it's been probably two and a half, three years now that him and his siblings were removed from um, his parents' home. So he, he is, he's been in foster care and now he's actually in a, um, I don't I like saying orphanage, but it's an institution. Basically it's, it's a hospital that they put him in, uh, to help him, um, with therapy and things to get through some of the things that he's going through. And it's, he's been institutionalized. He's not been in a home environment for a long time. And you guys, all I can think about, and I'm not going to cry and my battery's going low. So I need to hurry up. <laughs> it just told me battery low. Um, I am scared. We've never done this. I don't know what to expect, but all I keep thinking about is being able to just hold him and, um, tuck him into bed and read him books and say prayers with him and have breakfast with him and let him play with the chickens in the backyard and like just to give him that home environment again that he hasn't had in a really long time. There's a big difference when you're living in like a hospital um, and you have to raise your hand from the table to ask to go to the bathroom or you're like your room isn't your room and you know I've been in foster care and I, I kind of know what that feels like but um, a foster home is even very different from an orphanage type setting that Jackson is in. So I'm excited and I'm just praying you guys for God to lead us through this process and trying to shut out all the negative things that people are like, Oh, well, you don't know how he was raised and you don't know, you know, it's like, no, but people didn't know how I was raised either. <laughs> and I think that's turned off pretty good. So, um, you know, of course we don't know. That's, that's, that's part of it. We don't know. And we're going to have faith and we're going to pray a lot. And, um, the Watsons, we don't give up. We don't give up. So, um, anyways, you guys, I'm excited. Can you tell? I'm excited. Now my coffee's cold. I brought my coffee in here. Cause I'm like, oh, I'm gonna sit my coffee. I'm gonna talk to my friends. Um, but I always hate it when I'm watching someone's channel and they drink something and I can hear them gulp it down when they're talking. <laughs> Oh gosh. Okay. So, you know, two of my pet peeves, communication or lack of communication and people swallowing drinks when they're taking videos. So I won't do that to you guys. I'll spare you. <laughs> all right. I'm going to go, you guys. Um, I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're all safe. And, um, hopefully this, this virus will be over soon. And we just have to have faith that God knows what he's doing. Um, cause he always does. And everything always turns out for the good, even if we don't see it right away. So take care. And I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.